Hey guys, my name is Sergey, and you're watching Dissecting the Code. Today, I want to start a YouTube channel for professional .NET developers. I've been writing code for more than 20 years already. I started my career in a small product company in Ukraine. Then I worked in a large outsourcing company in Kyiv as an architect. And for the past 11 years, I worked at Microsoft, where I moved from SD2 to principal engineer. I started writing blog posts in 2008 and uh, was always curious about how things work. And writing about the internals and dissecting problems was always the best way for me to gain a deeper understanding of things I was dealing with. Most of the time, those things were the .NET internals, the c -sharp language, TPL, distributed system, design patterns, object-oriented principles, and many more. Currently, I work in Azure Core, and my focus there is figuring out what's wrong with the production systems, uh, fixing perf problems uh, that many other teams are facing, and most importantly, unblocking others and allowing them to thrive. It's 2025, and the AI hype is absolutely everywhere, and um, the software industry seems like changing so rapidly. But does it really? With all the advancement in AI coding assistance, we're probably going to have more and more code that is hard to understand, hard to debug, how to figure out what's wrong with that. And I do believe that fundamental understanding of things is going to be even more important than ever. Let's look at one example. Let's say you're working on a distributed system and a junior dev in your team wants to add an in-memory cache. And let's say they've decided to use a concurrent dictionary. And let's say that the user struct as a key. And the newly created struct doesn't override equals and get hash code methods. Is it a problem? Okay, there are some best practices uh, that suggest that it is important thing to do. But could you explain why it's important? What if the struct doesn't have any references in it? It's so-called blittable. Is it okay in this case? And what if the struct has a string as the first field, and that string always contains the same value? Would you be surprised that such cache would actually kill the perf of your application? For some, such knowledge is useless. For me, this is the fundamentals. This is how I bridge the gap between theoretical knowledge like big O notation and practical aspects. Your system is down because your cache it makes your system very slow due to a linear lookup speed. And I think it's important to understand the rationale behind best practices. For instance, why the cache is going to be slow in this case? Okay, that's because the default get hash code implementation in, in .NET for structs is very, very tricky. If the struct is blittable, meaning that it doesn't hold any references and there are no gaps between the fields, all the bits of a struct are going to be used for computing the hash code, making this hash code well distributed. And having a well distributed hash function is very important for performance. But if the struct has references in it, then only the first field is going to be used in the final hash code computation of such struct. And if the first field is the same all the time, then the hash code is going to be the same all the time for all the instances as well. And that will make a dictionary essentially a linked list with O of n lookup speed and not a constant lookup speed. And this is not a theoretical problem. The issue is based on a true story. When I worked on a next-gen build system called Build Excel, we had an interesting incident. We had a struct with the default equals and get hash code implementation used as a key in a dictionary. And at some point, the number of items stored there went up, drastically killing and affecting the end-to-end -end performance. And that was just because the struct had the same uh, value in the first field all the time. Or here is another story. You probably have heard that blocking asynchronous calls is problematic. But how problematic exactly? In Azure Core, I face this problem probably once every few months. And the last time I've seen this problem two or three weeks ago. Okay, this, this is called thread pool starvation. And um, this is a problem when all the threads in the thread pool are blocked and thread pool is going all the time, potentially reaching thousands of threads. 
killing the application performance. And knowing how async methods work under the hood and how the thread pool adds threads over time when all the worker threads are blocked is crucial in those types of investigations. The system's observability is absolutely essential in this case as well, because to figure out the problem, you need to know what's going on out there. And I'm pretty sure we're going to cover observability in future episodes. And this is the idea of this channel, to dissect various problems to better understand the technical world around you. Almost every abstraction that your system is relying on is leaky, and understanding one level below the surface is important. The fundamental knowledge builds intuition that you need for solving complex problems we are facing today, and I'm pretty sure the complexity of the problems is going to be even higher in the future. That was episode zero, just the beginning of our journey, and I hope you'll find this journey useful and exciting. And if you have a topic in mind you want me to cover, please share in the comment below. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, be curious, and see you next time.